The Hairsier is a fly pattern that has been around for ages. Why? It's simple, it's not very complicated to tie, and most important, catches lots and lots of fish. Its effectiveness comes from being a very versatile and buggy looking fly, meaning you'll be able to imitate a bunch of different bug types, mayflies, caddisflies, stoneflies, with just one pattern. To tie this fly, you'll need a standard nymph hook, and brass bead. Today I'm using a size 14 hook and a 1 8 inch bead in gold. Some 6 aught tying thread in brown, some pheasant tail fibers, some gold wire, and hare's ear dubbing. All right, gather up your materials, let's get tying. To start it off, let's get the bead on the hook and then the hook secured in our vise. Now we'll grab our bobbin and tying thread and start to wrap forward a few times, then back on top of the loose end of the thread. This is called a jam knot. And then we'll grab our tying scissors and snip the loose thread. Now we'll take our thread and lay down an even thread base. Now it's time to add our tail. For this, we're going to need some pheasant tail fibers. So let's grab our feather, pluck off a few fibers, and trim the curlies with our tying scissors. The end that we didn't trim is going to be our hair's ear tail. To attach our pheasant tail fibers, we're going to get them in place with one large loose wrap. We'll make any necessary adjustments. The two most important things are one, that the tail is the length that we want, for this fly, I like to make it just shorter than a hook shank in length. And two, that it's sitting directly on top of the hook. Now that we've got it adjusted, we're going to secure it in place with a few more wraps. And then we'll wrap up to the top just behind the bead. And we're going to leave the excess pheasant tail fibers long for now. This is going to make our wing casing later on. Now we'll grab our pair of all-purpose scissors and small gold wire. Let's cut off about two to three inches. To attach the wire, we'll make a few loose wraps, then slide the wire back until it's just behind the bead. Now we're going to wrap all the way back to our tail, locking the wire into place. And this wouldn't be a hair's ear without some hair's ear dubbing. We're going to create a three to four inch dubbing noodle. For any beginners, remember that we want to twist our dubbing in only one direction. If you twist both ways, it's never going to attach to the thread. After we formed our dubbing noodle, we'll wrap up our fly, leaving a little bit of space behind the bead. Now we'll grab our wire and wrap it around our body using open spirals. This not only makes our fly more durable, but it also gives some segmentation like you might see on a caddis larva or mayfly nymph. We'll take our tying thread, wrap it on both sides of the wire, and helicopter free. Now that we've got our body formed, let's work on our thorax and wing casing. To do that, we're going to fold back our pheasant tail and lock it into place, making sure that it is directly on top of the fly. Now we're going to make another two to three inch dubbing noodle and fill in our gap. There's our thorax. 
To complete the wing casing, we'll lay that pheasant tail back over the dubbing. And holding the pheasant tail in our right hand, we'll take the bobbin and go up and over the fly a few times. Then we'll make a few more tight wraps securing it in place. Now we can grab our scissors and snip the excess free. And then we'll give it a good three to five turn whip finish. Now grab your tying scissors again and snip off the thread. Now this fly is good to go and it's going to catch fish as is, but there are a couple of things you can do to make it even better. First, we can add a little bit of UV resin on the top. And hit it with our UV light. This is going to make our delicate pheasant tail fibers and tying thread a little more resistant to sharp trout teeth. And second, we can make it a little more buggy. So we'll grab our Velcro brush tool and tease out a few of those hair's ear fibers. Then we'll grab our tying scissors and trim to our liking. And there you have it, a buggy looking, tooth resistant, fish catching machine. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it easy to follow, be sure to check out all of our other tutorials here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on all of our weekly tips. Thanks for watching and live real life.